and welcome to Firm Foundation Bite Size Lesson Number 13, God Creates Eve. Well, once upon a time, actually not that long ago, things were pretty well nailed down. Marriage was considered to be the union of a man and a woman. In Webster's New World Collegiate Dictionary published in 1988, here's the definition of marriage. The state of being married, relation between husband and wife, wedlock, matrimony. And Webster's definition for being married is living together as husband and wife, joined in wedlock. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary in 2009 redefined marriage. Here's their new updated definition. The state of being united to a person of the opposite sex as husband or wife in a consensual and contractual relationship recognized by law. The state of being united to a person of the same sex in a relationship like that of a traditional marriage. Well, dictionary definitions may change or succumb to social pressure from special interest groups, but you see, God doesn't change. The Bible says in Hebrews 13.8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change to fit our ever-changing morality. A. God created us male and female. Genesis 1.27 So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Again, up until recently there were only two genders, male and female. I mean there is no debate. It was male and female. As a kid growing up, Mattel Toys only made two dolls, Ken and Barbie. Why? Because they were the only two recognized genders, male and female. And now there's this new term called gender dysphoria, which means gender confusion. As of today, ABC News has identified 58 gender options. And I'm not going to list them all, but here are just a few. A gender, androgen, androgynous, bigender, gender fluid, gender nonconforming, gender questioning, gender variant, gender queer, non-binary, other, pangender, trans female, trans male, trans man. I mean basically we live in a day when you can be whatever you say you are regardless of what your physical body looks like. And here's the thing, as of today doing this video there are 58 categories but tomorrow there could be 68 or 80. I mean the sky's the limit. Do you get an idea of how screwed up we are and how far we've fallen in our rebellion against God and his statement in Genesis 127? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. You see, the sad thing is we've lost sight of what it means to be created in the image of God as male and female. And because of that, we're no longer able to realize how special and how valuable we are as part of God's creation. B. There was no suitable companion for Adam among the animals. Well, God brought all the animals to Adam so he could name them all. And in the process of doing that, Adam realized that none of these animals was suitable as a companion for him. I mean, God knew that Adam needed a wife. And God loved man. He didn't want man to be alone. We come to see God created Eve from Adam's rib. Genesis 2.21 so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. See, God had actually made her from part of Adam's own body, Adam's rib. How precious and close she must have been to Adam. And God had given her a mind and emotions and a will so she could communicate with God as well as with Adam. Well, here's how that was depicted on the big screen in the 1966 Bible epic, The Bible in the Beginning. And he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And God made a woman and brought her unto the man. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. D. Marriage was ordained by God. Genesis 2.23 Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
she shall be called woman, because she is taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. Well, God made woman for man so they could be married, live together, and have children. He told them to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And this was God's command to Adam. Now think about this, because God created everything perfect, we can only imagine just how lovely this woman really was. And God had made her to be that perfect helper for Adam. And the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve were of one flesh, and we were told that they were naked and that they were not ashamed. They weren't ashamed of their bodies. But you see, sin and evil were lurking right around the corner, as we'll see in lesson number 16. We're going to see how Satan tempted Eve. But coming up in lesson number 14 and 15, we're going to look at the Sabbath. The Bible says that after working and creating everything during six days, God rested on the seventh day, the Sabbath, and he set it apart as holy. And we'll explore that in greater detail next time. Until then, this is Pastor Dale saying, Shalom.